You know, about 50 years ago, I wanted to be a telephone lineman. I wanted to be a pole climber. And my mother said, no, that's not a good idea. You've got to go to college and get an education. So I went to college and uh, was bored to death with most of the subjects. And in my senior year, they started a computer course. And that computer course I took in my senior year scratched that itch to be a pole climber. And so I've been in technology ever since with a couple of diversions into apparel businesses, but mostly in technology ever since. And I have found the last 12 months, in fact, I did a presentation here almost exactly one year. I think it was April 9th last year. But this past 12 months has been the most interesting year uh, I've ever seen in technology. And I've been through mainframe computers, mini computers, and PCs. I've been through all of them. But the subject of today is the tablet computer, which I'm convinced is the fourth generation of computing. And so this has been a tumultuous year for me. It's been a, probably, I've probably learned more this year than any year I've, I've had before. And I've got a really, uh, I've got a bunch of uh, things to talk to you about, a bunch of data. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about uh, taking notes because I'm going to put this slide presentation up on SlideShare tonight so that you can uh, download it. Now, we've got a fairly small group today, and I want you to know that I am comfortable with questions as we go. There's so much in these uh, slides, you may not want to wait. So it's okay to interrupt me as we go, particularly when I get into the section on, that I call facts from the front lines. First, I want to talk about this past year, a few of the events. And then I want to talk about disruptions. The news industry, the printing industry, has been uh, disrupted. And I want to talk about what happens in disruptions in other industries and how to decipher this disruption and skate to where the puck is going to be. Now, lots of people were caught by surprise by tablets, not the least of which the executives at Microsoft, Dell, uh, Sony, and every other computer manufacturer. And many of them, uh, as, as recently as this week, the top executives of both Dell and Microsoft were still claiming the iPads are fat. The people do not understand why the iPad's selling. I'm going to take a crack at explaining why the iPad's selling. Then I'm going to talk to you about a Reynolds Journalism Institute study Roger Fiddler did this year on the use of iPads for news. And he's updating that survey right now. Uh, then facts from the front lines. I'm going to give you a hard, cold facts about what this tablet's doing, and in particular, how it compares to its cousin, the iPhone. And last, tips on how to develop a winning application. Now, what a difference a year makes. When we stood here uh, a year ago, I had, uh, uh, I had a five-day-old iPad. And we had only promise. In that period of time, applications in the Apple iStore have doubled, in the Apple uh, iTunes App Store have doubled from 180 to 360,000. Uh, iPad apps were non-existent uh, a year ago, maybe 15 or 20. They've exploded to 65,000. The iPad by far is the fastest selling consumer device in history. The previous fastest selling consumer device was the DVR. And it sold 650,000 copies in the first year. And the iPad has sold 15 million, of course. The iPad appears to be the device for news. And I'm going to try to back that up with facts. Now, I, s I stole this chart from a fellow presenter at the NAA last Saturday because it just amazed me. What this shows, here, here is where we were a year ago when I was up on this stage. And what it shows is the first three quarters shipments of iPads, I mean uh, iPods down here, the iPhone, which was a phenomenon in and of itself. But look what happened with iPads. My God, they have just hit the ball across the fence. 
Now let's talk a little bit about disruption. Now I'm no stranger to disruption because I founded a digital printing company in 1990 with the objective of disrupting the analog printing industry. And I was going merrily along for a few years and before I could do much damage to the analog printing industry, I got disrupted by the internet. And the internet was very clear to me, it was going to sure change the printing business. So we started this business and I kept the printing business probably two or three years longer than I should. I loved printing, printing and ink was in my blood. And somehow I just couldn't give in to the thought that printing was going to change dramatically. I actually kept that company too. If I'd sold it two years earlier, I would have done much better. So I'm no stranger to disruption. Uh, Classic uh, disruptions that we've always seen is telephony. Actually, in the 1980s, I was in the telecommunications software what is business. That on the left? Pardon me? What is that on the left there? What, right here? Yeah, what is that? Well, when I got into the telecom software business, this was it. Everybody had that phone on their desk. And I love this cell phone. <laughs> I use Dr. that. I use that cell phone. <laughs> But when this started, uh, uh, there were billions and billions invested in buried copper and, and you know the story uh, of what's happened and how uh, landlines are, are less of a, uh, of a factor every day. That industry had to adjust and develop a new business model. You know the story of music. The music industry in particular refused to give in to disruption. They said, people that have digital music steal it, they're thieves, so let's go sue them all. And they just refused to c ever concede, particularly that this guy was going to go away. When they were in this business, you could still buy singles. But they found when they went to this business, if you wanted to buy a single uh, record, they made you buy 12 or 14 on a CD. They loved that business model. Their business just zoomed and they couldn't face the fact that this was going to change and be changed by that particular device and they've paid the price and they've been going downhill ever since they let Apple walk in take over their business. And now print, a, uh, a medium that's been around for 500 years. Uh, do you know of any other medium that has had a 500 year run? I mean it's, it, it was the first mass communications medium. And it's been around for a long, long, long time. And that's why all of us, including myself, have a hard time uh, giving in to the fact that printing is going to begin to diminish in importance over time and be replaced by other mediums. Disruptions can be anticipated and they can be managed, but they rarely are. They're rarely managed because it's hard for us to give up the things that we've invested ourselves in. Uh, the other uh, approach uh, to disruption is to plan for it, to plan for your own disruption. And the latest client uh, we have is the largest replicator of DVDs and Blu-ray disc in the world. And they, uh, when they uh, signed up with us, they said, we're here to develop products because, uh, app products, because we know that within five years there will be no DVDs and no Blu-ray disc. So that's the other approach to disruption, planning for it. Ultimately, every disruption has to be deciphered, it has to be figured out and replaced with new business models. Now to the disruptor of the day, touch computing. Uh, people call this business uh, mobile because it started with a mobile phone. Uh, when Apple first came out with this device and they came out with apps, I thought what a cute way to sell cell phones. I had no idea where Apple was going and nobody else had any idea where Apple was going. When they, uh, when they, when they created the iPod Touch, which is this device without a telephone, I thought, hmm apps are showing up on that device. And then when they announced the iPad, it hit me. My God, these guys have thought about a different way to do computing. So it's time for us to rethink the roles of computers. Whereas tablets up until the iPad 
tablets had been simply taking the technology right here in this device and putting it in a single pane device. Apple completely rethought it. And the way it's shaping up right now is, sure, these computers can be used for content consumption. You'll always be able to. But these devices are far more convenient for content consumption. So you're going to look at content consumption with these kind of computers, content creation with those kinds of computers. The first thing uh, to, uh, to do when you're trying to understand a disruption is to understand uh, why people buy touch computers. So let's talk about some of the reasons. First of all, convenience. It's the very same reason the grandmother bought an automatic washing machine. The automatic washing machine didn't do anything that you couldn't do by hand, but it did it faster and with less labor. It was more convenient. That's one of the motivations for touch computers. They buy to consolidate devices, media, and business paper. Uh, I have a, a good friend who uh, commutes uh, to New York City each day from Connecticut. And he said a year ago, when you walked to the train platform, everyone was standing there with a paper under this arm and a briefcase in this hand. He said more and more today, people are standing there with nothing in their hand but this iPad. He said fully a third of the people getting on the trains now have nothing but the iPad. So they buy it because the device helps them consolidate. They want to speed the accomplishment of daily tasks. Now, in our business, in the news business, this is the one we've got to pay a lot of attention to. They use it, uh, they want their news apps to speed accomplishment of a daily task. A daily task is getting informed on what's going on in the world. It's consuming news. But when they consume news, we've got to remember they want something that enables us to do it rapidly. It's not that well known, but one of the reasons, and I'll show you a slide that proves it in a moment, one of the things that's driving touch computer purchases is people are fleeing websites because websites have the worst user experience that you can imagine. Now, until the iPad came along, uh, there was no, nothing you could do but use websites. And the websites got worse and worse. You could open up a news website, and six ads started bouncing, jumping, yelling at you. You had to turn them off. And then the one-page article, uh, they spread it over four pages. So you would have to continue to page through the article so you could get more ad views, et cetera. And the experience on websites continued to decline. Those of you that are building apps or thinking about building apps need to remember this and not replicate on this new medium the, one of the reasons that people are leaving the old medium. They seek reliable applications. Unfortunately, in the first years of touch computers, uh, a touch computer application, I can tell you, is a lot more difficult to build than a website. And it's a very different building experience. So lots of them that went live, uh, they went live before they should have gone live, and they crashed all the time. When you create an app, when you take an application live before you should, before it's thoroughly tested, and it becomes crashy, then users are going to abandon your application and simply go to someone else that provides the same uh, information. And that's what I mean when I say these five Trump brand every day. They absolutely, if you don't deliver on these things, they absolutely will leave your application and go to another brand. Now, let's briefly take a look at where these tablets are headed. More devices and more screen sizes, that's a given. Uh, I think there are 100 tablets that are supposed to come to market this year. However, the iPad 2 has really uh, knocked the wind out of a bunch of those. A bunch of those will never even come to market. But as of January 1, they were predicting 100 tablets. More platforms. Well, uh, Hewlett Packard's uh, new, uh, 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 Hewlett Packard bought Palm and WebOS, and they revamped it and improved it substantially. And they've come out with a new Palm cell phone or a new HP cell phone and an HP tablet. 
Uh, I looked at their hour and a half presentation, the announcement of this. It's run by John Rubenstein, who, by the way, was one of the engineers at Apple on the iPod. And I got to tell you, I was wowed by what those guys have done. The HP tablet, in some ways, is better than the than the than the iPad. Now, they've got a long way to go. They're just coming out of the blocks, but they're a company to watch. Right now, we have to be concerned with. Uh, iOS, which is Apple, and we've got to be concerned with Android. In the future, I think HP is going to uh, going to be uh, will, will be a platform to deal with. And will Microsoft respond adequately and in time? Who knows? I've lost all confidence in micro Microsoft. I, I uh, uh, it makes me sad to see a company that big and that great decline the way they have, but I can't stand here with conviction and tell you that they're going to be a viable competitor. I actually hope they will because Apple needs all the competition they can get. A deeper penetration into family life. Uh, the stories are mostly anecdotal at this point, but there are so many families that have multiple iPads now already. Mm -hmm. A deeper penetration into enterprise. I'm seeing that from uh, my uh, customers. In fact, I have a, uh, a, cu uh, a potential customer that I'm working to land, which is one of the, uh, uh, it's a multi-billion dollar software firm, traditional software. But guess why we're talking? We're talking because all of their customers who use traditional legacy applications such as uh, customer uh, relationship management and accounts receivable and whatever the traditional apps are, all those people are saying, Hey, look, can I interact with this system with a touch computer as opposed to the laptop or the desktop? So the demand is, is now swelling to integrate this into the enterprise, and we're going to see it deeply penetrate the enterprise this year. Hundreds of thousands of more applications. I didn't put millions on there because I didn't want you to think I was crazy, but it will be millions. Now, this year, uh, just to give you an idea of the size of this phenomenon, this year, 100 million uh, iPhones, doggone it, this is supposed to say iPads. I thought I had that changed. Uh, this year, uh, 100 million iPhones will probably be sold. I believe 50 million iPads will be sold. Uh, another 100 million Andros, Android uh, devices will probably be shipped. And that adds, adds up to just this year alone, 2011 alone, it looks like a quarter of a billion touch computers will be shipped this year. That's worldwide? That's worldwide. And let me put it into perspective for you. As of last year, there were 1.1 billion PCs in use worldwide. And we're going to ship one-fourth of that total here in one year. And in 2012, the uh, touchscreen computer shipments will exceed PCs. So we're right on the front end of this being a more important device than the PC itself. Now, let's talk about the impact of tablets on the news industry. That's why we're here today. Uh, <coughs> Roger Fiddler is a, a professor at the Reynolds School at University of Missouri. And Roger's actually been following this tablet phenomenon for 10 years. If you ever go into his office, he has about 10 or 20 devices in there that are tablets of various extractions over the years. So he's not new to this. So as soon as the iPad got some traction, he did a study of people who use the iPad to uh, read news. Now, this study is not going to be, uh, don't think of it as a representation of all iPad users. He only studied the people that were using the iPad to consume news. Let's look at some of his findings. 94% uh, satisfaction rate, 70% very satisfied. Uh, most spent more than an hour a day, 62% more than an hour a day. A whopping third almost spent more than two hours a day. Most uh, use uh, occurs consistently throughout the week and at home. Those same figures uh, in pie chart form. A lot of news usage on this iPad. And it's mostly at home. Uh, this device you carry with you wherever you go. The iPad you typically use at home. The most popular use. Uh, following news is most popular. 
uh, followed by leisure reading, web browsing, and email. And 79% spend at least a half an hour a day reading news. And here it is graphically. Uh, surprised me, uh, I th would have thought uh, email would have been uh, the biggest used or entertainment, but it's not. News, news is the number one use. Now, these same uh, users uh, use a lot of media, but look at this one. This one surprised me compared to television, and compared to the PC, it's higher already. What amazed me on this chart was the number of people that read, it, read news more than an hour. Yes? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, first of all, you can you can get them out of my slide presentation on SlideShare, or uh, go to Reynolds Journalism Institute, University of Missouri, and you can download the whole study. These are just excerpts, by the way, and I would recommend you download the whole uh, deck. Big change. And I'm going to show you a graph in just a second okay. that, uh, that shows that. But yes, uh, this device gets used just like a newspaper does. It gets used in the morning and gets used in the evenings. Not so much during the day? Nope. Okay, interesting. Yeah, there's a big sag during the middle of the day. So it's just the opposite of using PCs. It is. All right. Sure is. Good observation. Now look at this. This is why I said a while ago, one of the driving forces is people leaving websites. Ninety-three percent are somewhat more, are, are very, are somewhat more likely to use the iPad app instead of going to the website. It's going to see a big shift in dollars and emphasis away from websites. This one is the finding to be concerned about. Among those who currently subscribe, the more they use the iPad, the more likely they are to cancel their subscription. And this shows it graphically, likely being the center here. The more they use it, the more likely they are to cancel their print subscription in the next six months. Can you go back to that one? Sure. sure. I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't want to answer something I don't know. We both touched on it a little bit this afternoon from the Dallas perspective. We don't, it's not exactly to that point, but the summer will continue now, sir. Sorry. With Tang, I think it, it, it ties directly. Hmm. It does not going to happen overnight. But it's a trend that uh, shows where we need to be uh, putting our time. So early indications are the iPad is a far more able competitor to newspapers than smartphones, OK? And there's some good things to that. Now, I want to talk to you about uh, facts uh, from the front lines. Uh, we build uh, large, uh, we build really the largest news applications for people like USA Today, uh, New York Times, where we built their Android application. We're about to uh, publish a WP7, a Windows Phone 7 application for the New York Times, uh, the Atlanta Journal Constitution, and three other Cox papers. And then we've gone into television news with CNN, Fox, uh, and Comcast, where we're, where we're working on uh, products like uh, Xfinity. So that's where these facts come from. Yeah, I, I passed up a couple of important facts. 
These apps have been downloaded 20 million times, so we've got a big universe that we're gathering information from. We send out over a billion user uh, notifications a year, breaking news notifications, and currently we're processing one and a half billion user sessions uh, per year. So the body of data that these facts I'm about to show you come from is a really large body of data. Tablet session links, this is the great news. Tablet session links are 121% uh, greater than the iPhone. Uh, you know, this 2.4 minutes, it's amazing. From customer to customer, from device to device, uh, on these uh, uh, smartphones, it always ends up to be somewhere near two and a half minutes. Tablets are more than doubling that. That's what do you great mean by news. I mean when you open someone's application till the time you close it. Now I expected sessions per day, particularly because of what I was telling you, I expected sessions per day to be dramatically lower on the iPad. Found out they're not. They're only 11% lower on the iPad. That was a big surprise to me. Also, good news for all of us in the news industry. Here's the chart I was telling you about. Here is uh, hours per day on the iPhone, which by the way looks more like the PC. But here's hours, uh, uh, chart of usage by hour a day on the iPad. It's used just like newspapers. It's used in the morning, it's used during commute time both directions, and it's used in the evening. On time of day? Yeah, you know, I don't know. That's going to be interesting to watch. And let me tell you what could shift it. What could shift it is the invasion of tablets into the enterprise. Because the more they're invading, they're invading the enterprise, uh, the more they're, you're, they're going to be with you all day long. Right now, it's easy to leave them at home. But when you start using them in business, it's going to be difficult. Now, I know we're not the typical enterprise firm. But when the iPad 2 came out, uh, I reasoned that our employees are going to use an iPad partially for business and partially for work. So I gave all of our employees that wanted to buy an iPad 2, uh, I gave them, the, I said, I'll pay the first $200. And uh, we've got 21 iPads in our firm now because of that. And I don't worry about the fact of them taking the work computer and using it for personal use or vice versa. So that's sort of a work for me. I think you're going to see more and more of that kind of thing. That could change this pattern. Now, one... Bill, can I get in? Uh-huh. One of the things that really stuck with me is actually a couple slides back. You were talking about the minutes per session. Yes. Do you see much variance between how... And maybe you're going to get to this, and I apologize if you are. No, don't worry about it. Is, is like how dynamic or the, the type of that vary greatly or especially with all the news apps y'all have developed it's fairly consistent no there's one big differentiator video and I'm going to show you some stats in a few minutes on video but video is the big difference between apps uh, and uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you the conclusion early all news apps are going to have to have video and it doesn't matter whether your history is print or not. All news apps are going to have video. And I'm going to show you in a few moments, I'm going to show you some darn dramatic statistics from March 11th, the earthquake tsunami day. Um, and I'm going to compare those that had video and breaking news notifications to those that didn't. Now, one newspaper, one really big newspaper's experience. They had an iPhone in the market for 22 months when this data point was taken, and they had the iPad in the market for seven months. After seven months, the install ratio was two to one. After seven months, the iPad installs equal 50% of the iPhone installs. That really shocked me. I, I, with us what newspaper uh, had this it might be the one that helped build this center. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll share things like that as we go if you don't tweet them. <laughs> <laughs> so in seven short months, um, um, iPad installs equal half. It's, it's higher now. I've forgotten when I did this data. This data point was taken two or three months ago. Uh, the iPad 2 is screaming off the shelves internationally. And I think that um, I'm guessing, I can't wait to see the stats. I'm guessing most of the iPad purchases are new users because there's not much of a, unless you're a tech nerd like me, there's not much of a case for upgrading from iPad 1 to iPad 2. So I'm guessing most of these are people that were sitting around saying, wow, hearing about this iPad, well, there's a new one coming out. They see the new one, they go for it. I'm guessing that's where they're coming from. And what that's going to do is, that's going to continue to change this ratio. And I'm going to show you in just a moment how much more money you make on the iPad. And that's why this is a good thing. The iPad is a great thing for the news industry. Now, the minutes per month per user are also very different. 76% greater usage of the iPad than the iPhone. Here's the good news. CPMs are at least five times. Now, I didn't put the Ken Doctor's slide says you're, uh, that people today are getting 100 to 150 dollar CPMs on the iPad. I didn't even put that in there. Uh, I know it's true, but I also know they're going to shrink. But 50 dollars, when you say, is this a fairly, yeah, uh, fairly uh, safe assumption? So look at that. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's just awesome. And, and the click-through rates are so high that advertisers will pay it all day long. Your average click-through rate on, obviously on the web is 0.08%, and the average click-through rate we're seeing um, in our app is 4.5%. So point oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to confess, in the news industry, we've, we've been overly morose over the last few years about the decline of print. But there are some things that we're opening our eyes to about this new medium that means we shouldn't be quite so morose. Different, it's going to be different, but it's not necessarily going to be worse. So look at the economics. If the iPad apps have session times 2.2 times longer and the CPMs are five times higher, that means an iPad can generate up to 11 times the revenue of an iPhone install. And given the fact that we know CPMs are greater than 50 bucks, it's even higher than 11 times. So if you're going to develop your first app, guess what you should develop it for? Duh. Now, at um, the NAA last week, um, this guy challenged me and he said, okay, does the iPad get new readers? Well, that's where it really shines. Uh, one major newspaper who had something to do with funding the center uh, now has touch computer readers equal to 140% of the paper circulation. And those of you who know that newspaper, which finances the center, uh, know that a lot of those papers uh, end up laying in the hotel corridor at the end of the day. So this is even more dramatic and this particular uh, newspaper is still getting you know, the iPad, Android, and iPhone uh, combined. They're still getting, I never said this, uh, about uh, 400,000 installs a month. Is that unbelievable or what? Th these numbers just shock me and I'm used to big numbers but... but She can't respond to that, but I'll respond far. She's seen great numbers. <laughs> what we're seeing in terms of as the ratio to uh, ours are a little smaller, but obviously we're, we're selling the next paper now too. <laughs> so, but but the revenue is, is good enough to where we're very happy. Not only is it getting new users, it's getting younger users. 
Now, one thing we can't tell about USA Today, we can't tell how many people are new to the brand, but that's way above 50%. Way above 50% that are new to the brand. Are, are the users also, though, younger than the website? Don't know the answer to that. That's a great question, and I don't know. I doubt it. See, because that's what we're worried about in Dallas is that we're at median age on the front is 52, median age on our website is 41. Um, but we I don't know. No idea where it is on the iPad, but we think it's older. If you do a study, I sure would be interested. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So the biggest uh, revelation to me that happened to me this year is this one, that the market for news is a heck of a lot bigger than the market for newspapers, i.e., the newspapers that we all know and love were dramatically underserving the market for news. These devices, these touch computer devices, they help us catch up. And that's why our audiences are bigger, and that's why our audiences are younger. So in, 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 we're down in Chattanooga, and uh, they, they had a problem with service in one area, and so our plan at one point was to give out iPads for a long time, subscribers to get them free, but that not the first demographic for it. I mean, it's still boring at that model, but it's a possibility. You know, you, we're, we're discussing the price of the, uh, of the iPad users. Uh, you know, another approach to that might be to uh, do your readers like I did our employees. Give them a $100 certificate or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, by the way, you will probably, within six months, uh, be able to go into an Apple store as a business and get a 10% discount on them. Uh, so I feel sure Apple would work with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. When you have the younger, you know, number, are they skewing number on what they're looking at? I mean, is there anything surprising about what they're looking at in oh. terms of what you charge them or anything like that? No, it's not surprising. Uh, uh, it won't be surprising when I tell you, but USA Today only recently added a tech section. Added a what section? Tech section. Yeah. That's crazy. We should have added tech and travel the first day. And when we added tech and travel, user satisfaction went way, way up. So you've got to realize the guys that are, uh, you've got, to, I mean, really the buyers of iPads are still early adopters. I mean, maybe not quite as classic early adapters as, as it was a year ago. But they're still early adopters, and you want to deliver news that this uh, community wants to see. Uh, that's why social features and apps uh, are so important. I haven't seen a study on that. Um, I'm, in, I'm inclined to say <laughs> they're on Facebook, but I, I can't back that up. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, uh, certainly long term, uh, the iPad's a no brainer uh, because uh, what has been uh, uh, one of the main reasons the iPad's been selling is because it's a device that you can give it to a two-year-old or an 80-year-old and uninstructed, they can work it and quickly.
Now, there's a big difference in the quality of news apps out there. And it's because of the way management has approached the news app. There's two ways to do it. Number one, you can see this as a brand new production method, which is going to increasingly elbow printing out of the picture. And if you look at it that way, you look at the expenditure for an app as an investment. But the majority of people still look at apps as an expense to be minimized. There's an entirely different mindset between those two approaches. When you put out apps and your mentality is, let's see how cheap we can do it, just so we can say, we have an app. Just like 15 years ago, we were say, oh, we got a website. You, your app uh, shows it. And it's not competitive, and uh, your utilization rates become really low. So we uh, try to encourage our customers to realize that even though ad revenues are down, as we transition to apps, the costs are going to be down even more dramatically because an app replaces an enormous investment, an enormous capital investment. And you know, a, a, a printing company, a newspaper company, they never want to talk to you about this. They love this. They never uh, look at those costs that, that hard. And the cost of an app is a rounding error compared to these costs that they're replacing. So we're great advocates of using an investment mentality. Uh, I, we do not have a single customer that yet spends nearly on apps what they should be spending. Not a single customer. That includes my dear friends at USA Today. Now, uh, skating to where the puck's going to be. That's what you do uh, when, when, when you're disrupted. When the internet came along, we started this company because we felt that would help us skate to where the puck was going to be. So I want to talk to you about two things. Uh, the kinds of applications uh, consumers seek. And then I want to talk about the process of developing an app because all of you will be involved one way or another. Uh, and you, you're just going into it. Uh, will be involved one way or another in this development process. And I want to provide uh, some tips uh, for success. Uh, applications consumers seek. I could talk for a half an hour about this one. If I didn't talk about anything else today, I would talk about this. You've got to have an excellent user interface in your application. If you don't, it won't be easy to use for the consumer. If it's not easy and fast for the consumer to use, they won't use it. You've got to have a great interface. It takes a great designer. They expect apps that are very responsive. They absolutely will not keep an app that's slow. The biggest uh, disappointment in uh, Murdoch's daily is that it's slow to load. Every time you load it, it's 60 seconds. News consumers will not put up with that. News, they go to day after day, uh, all throughout the day. They won't put up with an app that's sluggish. Can't say enough about that one. Have offline modes. Everybody gets on airplanes. In major cities, you get on subways. Your app needs to have an offline mode where you can download everything offload. Uh, it's a given now. You've got to be able to share your content via social media. They've got to contain uh, video, particularly for breaking news. And I'll show you some numbers here that uh, may surprise you, may not. Now, still photography uh, is not going by the wayside. Uh, video doesn't replace still photography at all. They're two different things. And we found that in all of the apps we build, users love still photography. They love to be able to thumb through good still photography. Uh, the best apps enable uh, search and article saves. And the best apps contain breaking news notifications, particularly those that are customizable. And hardly anybody is doing customizable breaking news notifications. The biggest disadvantage, I like breaking news notifications uh, because uh, I want to be informed. I mean, 
you don't want somebody coming up to you in the office, do you, and say, did you hear? And you have to say, no, I hadn't heard that. <laughs> everybody wants to stay informed, and everybody wants to stay up to the minute. That's why breaking news notifications are important. Why else are they important? They're important because one of your biggest revenue sources in applications is advertising revenue. Breaking news notifications drives up your utilization. And you're going to want to do everything you possibly can with your app to drive up utilization because that means ad views, okay? And customizable breaking news uh, notifications. You know, I do not want to know that Jennifer Aniston stubbed her toe, okay? But I do want to know if there's an earthquake in Japan near a nuclear reactor. So news, you can make news notifications customizable. We're just not there as an industry. But as you think about your future, be sure and think about customizable news applications. You might want business news notifications. You might want celebrity. Well, you wouldn't want celebrity news <laughs> notifications, would you? But uh, you've got to be able to customize this uh, for preferences. Bill or anybody in this room, how do you think we're doing in terms of providing quality video content in these applications? Anybody? Wow, that's But when breaking news happens, if you don't have video, your, your site will really suffer. Over the last 10 years, everybody uh, in this room has done a good job of moving from once a day news to up to the minute news. The same transition is going to have to be made to uh, include video because the world uh, is getting bored with text only, uh, particularly on news days. And on news days is when you get your traffic. You couldn't do much about a high news day with newspapers, but you can with this medium. Yes, you had a question. Yeah. 
Interesting. Yes, sir. You do. And I think that's the biggest issue. That you do. That are doing the everyday work. We want to do more video. We you know do. what kind of video works, but it's getting the resources to do it. Yeah. Um, and showing the value in it. Because it's yeah. not always the thing that people see will drive more revenue, although I think it can. Um, and that's been our hard experience. The one thing we did discover, though, is people do want video because we used to have it a lot, but it was hard to find. We redesigned our website recently. Doesn't surprise me a bit. No, but it's really important because we can make it so much better. Definitely. It's an expectation. Bill, I think those eight, eight points are the most important. So far. <laughs> look, look forward to better <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Corey, you had a comment. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I, I don't disagree that education and morale and training and things is important, but I think we cannot do that in a vacuum. We really need to focus on what users are looking at, what they want, and then respond to that. I mean, you can't you can't train all your source correspondents to be shooting video and using all of their time, all of their gifts, all of their commitment, and your channel is five people watching. It's no good. Right. How are they consuming that source?
we're running a little longer. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. You had a question a while ago. Well, I was just going to make a comment that I've actually seen just in the last year a little bit improvement in the video storytelling. Before it was like, oh, here's the story and you have to read all this copy and then listen to the video that's kind of associated but it doesn't really tell the story. But I've seen better pacing, um, not a bunch of white thought to white thought to white thought. I've been, somebody's paying attention to some of those sites and, and maybe actually hiring two videographers and yeah. editors to, to make it just more than just take some video. Change your numbers. You had a question right there. A comment on studies. A comment on using studies to determine what your future products will be. The CEO of the biggest, no, the CEO of the second largest corporation in America says consumers are not responsible for knowing what they want next. And I think that's true. And I think that's true in your business. And that's why we have the iPad today. Because everybody else in the industry was doing studies and the studies showed that people wanted Microsoft Windows on a tablet when they didn't. Let's take a look at Tsunami Day. March 11th, big earthquake, tsunami. One news organization sent two million breaking news notifications. And they sent them one time only. So let's look at the results. That day, our servers responded on average to a thousand story request per second for 22 straight hours. 72 million story requests. Now, I don't believe that they had standby ads, but one of the things you need to be programming, particularly those of you involved in ad sales, you need to be planning to have standby ads on these high news days, the TV stations have done it for years. CNN loves it when there's a disaster because their rates scale way up. But this particular organization had the potential for 72 million ad displays that day. And guess what it cost them? Zero. So that's a big change from uh, selling news on paper. Now let's look at three of our clients on that day. This is the unique visitors they had. No matter how many times a person came to that site that day, they were counted only once in this column. And this is the number of sessions they had. So you can see on average there, you had what, two and a half uh, visits there. And uh, on this one, you had uh, nine visits on average. And uh, here's the difference, this third one, uh, a, pretty, uh, a pretty good number of visitors, but look at their uh, visitation and sessions, and they actually, this particular client has more downloads than these two. But the difference is this particular client does not have a check mark here and does not have a check mark there. So on Tsunami Day, breaking news notifications absolutely drove sessions out the roof. And the company that didn't have video suffered that day because everybody switched over to the people that did have video. And we've seen this every, uh, we saw this in the Chilean mining disaster. We saw this in the uh, Haitian uh, earthquake. So breaking news notifications are very important. These guys went overboard. I, it would have driven me crazy had I had their breaking news notifications turned on and gotten seven that day. So we've got to learn what consumers will accept 
But uh, this particular client, Client B, was the winner that day. Uh, they just had uh, a gigantic amount of traffic. Now, a few tips for managing the development process, because you'll know that most of you uh, get engaged one way or another in the development process. Get your content feeds perfected before beginning development. Every client we've ever had told us their content feeds were great, and we have yet to find one where that was true. And we've had one client where we've been working on their application almost a year, and that has all had to do with uh, disorganized content feeds. So that's really important. Don't rush the development process. Plan for at least 90 to 120 days. Let me tell you the worst thing that can happen to you in this business. Uh, you sit down with a customer and they say, look, I want to launch this app April 30th, okay? I said, well, you know, everything considered, we can probably uh, get it done in that time frame. And then they go out and they take it to the salespeople. So the salespeople get somebody like Marriott Courtyard to sign on for May 1st, a gigantic promotion. And then you come to the last week of May and we say, the app's not ready uh, for whatever reason. It could be our fault. Most usually it's the content feeds, getting those things correct that really slow us down. The app's not ready. We've got to go live. The app's not ready. We need more testing. Look, it works okay on my, the app hasn't been tested. What is this? Excuse me. Uh, the uh, app's not ready. And finally they say, well look, we're committed to Marriott Courtyard, go live anyway. <laughs> you go live anyway and your app crashes and new users look at it. Who wants a crashy app? Sometimes they give you another chance, uh, a lot of times they don't. So how long did USA Today give you to develop that app? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm not talking about USA Today. Did you get 120 days? Yeah, USA Today, I'll have to say this. I'll have to say this, USA Today, has consistently given, they have never forced us to go live when we shouldn't have. They have never forced <laughs> us to go live when they shouldn't have. And uh, they've gotten mad at us a time or two because we can't get things done as fast as they would like, but they've never forced us into a, into a conversion. Uh, I, will, I will say on the iPad app, they made the decision to build an iPad app five months, no, five weeks uh, before the iPad went on sale and we hit that date. But we had two guys working seven days a week, you know, 20 hours a day or something like that. Uh, and we hit that date. But we didn't release it till the app was solid. As I said earlier in the presentation, the three most important things are user design. Why do I focus on that? It's because good design results in high user ratings. High user ratings result in frequent usage. Frequent usage results in high retention rates and high engagement times, which means more ad views. So it's a revenue, it's, it's a revenue thing, okay? Good design generates more revenue. Choose the right designer. And I can tell you that the world is full of terrific graphic designers who aren't worth a tinker's darn at designing for these devices. You've got to have a designer that designs for these devices that understands the design principles and understands the operational principles of the device or their designs won't work. Uh, uh, we had uh, one customer that brought us everything completely designed. The screens were perfectly beautiful, but none of them worked because the designers knew nothing about the device and we spent as much time convincing them to let us change their designs as if we had designed the thing from the ground up. Build to maximize revenue. That is the only reason for the existence of apps. Don't get focused on uh, the technology. Don't get focused on all the cute things you can make these things do. They only have one reason for existence, and that's to generate revenue. And everything you do should have in mind that end goal. So what this means is, if you're going to build to maximize revenue, build an iPad app first. If you can afford it, go ahead and build a combo app, which is an app that, that, that displays uh, equally well on the iPhone and the iPad. Focus uh, both on ads and sponsorships. Most people focus only on ads. Sponsorships are very, very valuable on these devices. Then 
protect the user experience. Don't duplicate the cluttered, busy experience of websites. Uh, the ad salespeople are going to push you to create an experience that will drive your users away because they want to, uh, to own that space. You've got to resist that. Yes? You can't forget having a mobile site. Everyone needs a mobile site because there are so many feature phones out there that can display a mobile site that can't dis display a native application. But once you field a native application, you'll watch your uh, numbers drop on your mobile website as people convert over to the native app. Mobile websites can't even come close to competing with a naval uh, app. Offer subscriptions. Users won't pay for brand, but they will pay for quality content delivered by a quality application. They will pay. But the application has to be high quality. The content has to be high quality. In my opinion, the daily is going down in flames. The daily is going down in flames because they've got uh, content, uh, which is uh, more magazine content than it is newspaper content. They've got the wrong architecture. It's a magazine type format, and magazine type formats require graphic artists. So consequently, they're not set up to do breaking news throughout the day. It's like a newspaper. It's once a day news, and uh, they uh, don't have a quality application. The application, they had to even extend the um, uh, time to subscribe. Yes. Uh, well, if if news organizations will move together and put quality content behind a paywall with the commodity content offered for free, the commodity they can get anywhere. Grant does it well. When he get to his presentation, ask him that question. He, he provides the commodity content for free, and then he puts behind a paywall the premium content, the local content. And uh, uh, the New York Times is, is uh, as of Monday, started a paywall. Uh, and I'm pushing USA Today to use that umbrella that the New York Times is setting up. If all major news organizations will move together and do enough experimentation, they'll find a price. Now, I'll tell you one thing I think the Daily did right. I think they found the right price. Everybody loved the idea of 99 cents a week. Uh, it's because the user reaction to it was so good. I mean, uh, 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 they they got so many, uh, so many comments. Ninety nine cents a week. Well, that's not bad. Yeah. You know, there there is yet Rex. There's there's not great examples out there of people who've been successful. But if newspapers will, will all move toward doing this, then consumers are going to have to pay. Uh, and I think the ones at the end of the day that don't have a subscription model are going to have a whole lot more trouble staying, uh, by keeping their, uh, vi uh, their business model viable than those that do. Uh, and this is painful. I mean, this is the most painful uh, thing. I, I, uh, I sympathize with it. But we're going to compliment okay. it. Okay. Somebody said something about a slide. Can you go back one second? That one I passed over? Does that shock you? That is really expensive to you consider you spend more than that on oil for your printing presses. Yes. Higher than oil wax? You know, <laughs> good point. <laughs> That's good because we were talking about 30000 bucks last year. Right. Yeah, yeah. This is what the uh, the good iPad apps that I'm building right now are, are run between 175 and 225. Just a fact. But uh, you know something about the cost of printing presses. Yes, Corey. I actually 
I think that's true now. That that is the that's the right figure. Of course, you you want to own your code after and that's kind of yep. you know, something to start yep. with. But you know what I see for 2011 and 2012 is really um, small you know warehouses that are actually going to give you a quick templating, kind of how GoDaddy and, and the wor the word pressing of, of apps is going to happen. Yeah. And so it will be more affordable. Yeah. I mean, right now that's really tough. But you're going to have firms that create, you know, do-it-yourself widget rib app development because everybody's going to want an app. Right. The same for e-commerce is going to want an app. Right. So that's going to happen. It, it's just not. This is true right now, but that's just the way it is right now. It's true, and, I, and this seems big. Uh, and to shorten my presentation, I took out about six slides on the arithmetic. The return on that kind of an investment is amazing. It's absolutely amazing if you calculate the return. If you look at the revenue that an iPad app can generate, it makes this look like the best investment you've ever made. From advertising. From advertising, yeah. What about my student paper if you want to South Dakota? Yeah, not going to work. Yeah, nobody can afford those prices, and that's why Corey's right. Uh, you're going to come up with templated solutions. Do you know what? Uh, I can't find anybody who wants to finance. I could build a templated solution right now. In fact, I built one for Cox, the one we use for Atlanta Journal Constitution. We use the very same app for the Austin American Statesman, Palm Beach Post, and Dayton Daily News. So we could build that, but I can't find anybody that really wants to finance it. Half a million dollars, you could build an app that would be a really a high quality app. Uh, that you could rebrand quickly uh, and uh, it would be templated and be very inexpensive. Uh, Grant's organization, he's going to tell us more about it. His organization is using such an approach uh, uh, based on the New York Times press engine. So you're right, Corey, it's going to happen. Yeah. Okay, I'll be glad to do that. I'll, I'll, I'll insert those. I'll insert those. It's, it's, an, it's, a, it's an amazing calculation. Actually, at the, at the bottom of the calculation, when I show the return, uh, I have another slide that, that cuts the return by two-thirds. Say, okay, you don't believe me? Let's cut it by two-thirds, and it's still phenomenal. <laughs> it's just a, it, it's a good proposition. It's a good investment. So priorities, Combo app first, Android second. We haven't had great experience. Uh, with Android compared to the iPhone. The utilization, please don't tweet that, the utilization statistics are uh, dismal compared to the iPhone. Uh, and I'm not really sure why. People don't use it as often. There's not as many sessions and the sessions aren't as long. Particularly, Corey, the session links. The session links are, are, are a lot shorter. Uh, is that going to change? Well, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. And I can't really explain it. But didn't Android just surpass in terms of mobile? Lots of units out there. But for some reason, the Android user is not as tuned to news as the iOS user. And I've never seen anybody do a study as to why. And the Android tablet, uh, it may someday be a winner, but right now there's only 17 apps. Uh, and apps are why people buy equipment. Uh, pe pe people aren't going to buy anything unless there's thousands of apps for it. And so the Android tablet, in my judgment, is going to have a tough, this is going to be a tough year. Uh, there's nothing uh, wrong with the equipment. <coughs> Excuse me. And nothing wrong with the uh, Motorola Zoom equipment. As a matter of fact, we're building a great big app for it uh, for Comcast, but uh, uh, I, I think it's going to be a, a no-show. Uh, right now, any other tablet other than the iPad I've seen, it's hard to find a buying reason. It's hard to find a reason to buy it as opposed to the iPad, unless you just hate Apple. And there's a certain group of people out there that hate Apple. So they'll buy it, but the other Android than that. System? Pardon me? What's the Android well, they are. Uh, they are in the Microsofties, too. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who couldn't buy. Yeah. But you know, Rex, I was watching our numbers very closely 
when uh, Verizon opened up sale of the iPhone, and I kind of thought, uh, well, maybe there will be a trade-off. Maybe Android will drop, and it will be picked up in iOS. I can't pick that up in my stats. So last slide. Whew, finally through this. Build apps that are effective. That means well-designed. That are efficient, which means super responsive. That are reliable, which means they don't crash. And that have features that users prize, such as breaking news notifications and video. And they'll come. And they'll pay. And when I say they, I mean consumers and advertisers both. Because that didn't get on my slide. OK, well, we've done questions all through this. And I've run way over my time. And I apologize for that. Yes, I'll be here. <laughs>